Hey everybody, it's Chris from The Droning Company here with David Benowitz, the Director of Marketing for Brink Drones. You guys are a good friend of The Droning Company, so it's really nice to meet you, yeah. absolutely. So we're here at Expo 20, uh, 2023, excuse me, and got to talk about this guy. We already talked a little bit about the lemur too with Blake in an episode of the Let's Talk Drones podcast. Tell us a little bit more about what's happened with the lemur too and what you guys are expecting for the rest of the year. Yeah, we're super excited to be here at Exponential and speaking to you guys as well. This is one of the first times we've been able to show off the Brink lemur two flying uh, to like a very big audience. Uh, we've been doing mostly kind of uh, demos on and off with some different agencies. So super excited to be here. Um, with the Brink lemur two was launched just uh, recently in March. Um, and what this airframe is really built around is indoor and close proximity tactical operations for law enforcement, um, essentially giving them the capabilities to gain intelligence, make entry, establish communication, and eventually de-escalate a situation. Um, so that's kind of where we are specialized, where other airframes kind of fail. Um, what that means specifically is we perform amazingly well in no light, no GPS environments that are indoor. Um, and how we do that is with a whole new autonomy system on this airframe, powered by two LiDAR sensors, a tracking camera, and autonomy floodlight, so it can hold its position in uh, no GPS, no light environment, all with that system, uh, whereas other drones would fail. Uh, we're still kind of as rugged as we were at the Lemur S, able to flip back over a total mode and all that good stuff. We also have a brand new imaging system, 4K visual, clear lepton, uh, white strobe light, and all that good stuff as well. So you have uh, kind of the full capabilities. And then just as we've done with the, the Lemur S, we bring our microphone and loudspeaker on board as well. So integrated to a communications, and of course, our one and only glass breaker. Uh, yeah. uh, so, you know, we're so sad here. You know, we have a flight cage, but uh, we would get kicked out if we did break some glass at the booth. Absolutely. But, you know, if we do a demo for any agency, we always end with breaking some glass. Um, essentially, that just snaps on here at the bottom, just like that. And then you get your tungsten carbide spinning and hidden in glass and panes. Um, so, fun feature, but very much enabled still on de escalation missions, which is always kind of critical. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, one of the features that I talked to Blake about on the Let's Talk Drones podcast mm -hmm. was about the, uh, the, the, uh, what's it called? The ecosystem, the uh, the repeater system that you have on there. Really neat technology, and honestly, something for public safety and emergency response that will be life saving, I'm sure, in the future. Tell us a little bit about how that works. Yeah, and it's actually improved since you last spoke to him. Okay. Um, so with our old Lemur S product, what we were using was an analog system that would do a repeater box kind of you could put on the end of a, tra uh, of a of a truck or whatnot as well to extend connection. We've moved to a brand new digital system. Um, and what that gives us is a lot more flexibility on exactly how it works and user friendliness of it as well. Sure. Um, so the first thing it enables is one to many. Um, so our remote controller, you're able to actually toggle between, you'll see here, we don't have any drone connected, but instead of controller, you can check to drones. You can toggle between different drones you have there as well. Okay. And the application for that is being able to deploy one drone, have it go inside, cover a hallway and perch it. And then you can deploy the second drone with an extended range using the meshing capability to go further within the structure without basically any restrictions when it comes down to range. Because indoor is always the toughest environment with range, so we really thought of different ways we can do it. The last thing that this can do is it can also mesh with other body-borne radios that law enforcement already have. So if they have a compatible radio, if they just deploy officers around the structure, they're already extending the range of our drone as well. So this is something we're super excited about. That's very cool. And I mean, that makes it easy because if a department only has the funding for one drone, they can still use their officers as repeating and mesh networks exactly. that the drone can connect and to. Kind of moving forward, we are enabling officers to have a cheap alternative option to buy a twin pack, cool. where essentially we kind of package all the accessories together with two airframes. Either if one airframe goes down or if they still want to do this type of meshing capability in a single household at a low cost, they have the capability to do that with our twin pack. Excellent. That's so cool. Now, in terms of the Lemur 2 and, you know, some of the use cases you have with it, law enforcement being a big one, you know, who's who's already interested in that? Are you allowed to talk about that? You know, so uh, we, we have a few agencies that are already uh, kind of in the early stages and have already procured one and are in the process of deploying. I don't think I can mention any agencies by name per se. Uh, check back in a few months and we could definitely name a few and we'll put them on our website and all that stuff as well. Okay. Um, but yes, um, a lot of our existing customers are super excited about this. The autonomy system gives them such an easier process of coaching up a pilot to fly an indoor aircraft. Sure. Flying an aircraft, always hard. Always. With our new autonomy system, it's, it's almost like flying a consumer off-the-shelf drone in an outdoor environment with full light, but indoor without light and 
complete, completely full of obstructions. Absolutely. So that's what we're super excited about. A lot of Lemur S pilots being able to make that jump and not just have it where two or three pilots are fully trained up, but the whole squad can kind of hop on behind the sticks. And that's that's a, that's another topic we talked about before in the past with Brink is the ease of use because in a lot of scenarios, police departments, emergency response, you don't have drone pilots on staff. You're training officers and agents to actually use the drone technology. So tell us a little bit about the development, the development behind that ease of use. Yeah. So it kind of, you're 100% right. Like it's the most key, I think, you know, we ask so much of our officers. Um, they're trained so much, not just on piloting, but on all different type of, of tools and technology, tasers, uh, guns, obviously just overall de-escalation tactics and law enforcement tactics and the law as well. And so expecting them to become FPV pilots is kind of hard. Yeah. Um, and so what we've done is we've built a whole new autonomy system on which this airframe is based upon, which we use the LiDAR data as well as the tracking camera and the LiDAR data on the bottom to create a 3D map of the environment in real time. Okay. And so that's used to position the airframe in 360 degree space and hold a hold position as if it had GPS, but it doesn't have GPS. Wow. And so that's kind of the, the type of flight that you're kind of seeing. And you're kind of see as we fly back here in the booth every once in a while, how stable the flight really is. You can finally take hands off sticks. You know, I don't advise, you know, taking coffee break. Right. You, you could take a coffee break though. Yeah. Um, and really kind of keep that stability there indoor, which is uh, super powerful. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Well, I, I think that's kind of the key thing is just having the officer focus on tactics instead of on the nuances of flight. Um, which is finally kind of enabling them to do for indoor operations. Absolutely. Now, I don't want to take focus off the Lemur 2, but the other product you have here that's very interesting is the Brink Ball. So this isn't necessarily a UAV that you can use and fly, but it's still pretty interesting technology, and it's really kind of cool how it helps law enforcement. Yeah, we were talking to the AVSI guys. It's, it's technically uncrewed, uh, but it's, it's kind of stretching the, the ten terms of it. Um, but kind of the Brink Ball brings the same concept of focus on establish communications and de-escalate to a whole another level. Um, you know, a, a drone like the Lemur 2 is going to be great when you're deploying at a specific mission, doing a barricade, or you're deploying a SWAT team to a mission. Um, but law enforcement need de-escalation capabilities every day. Um, if they're doing a wellness check, if they're doing suicide prevention, um, they just need to be able to establish communication without putting themselves in harm's way. And also, sometimes people might see that as an escalation as well. Um, and so they have a gun, they have a taser, they don't have any way that stop and increases their communication and de-escalation capabilities until now. Right. And so what we're seeing now is a lot of people are looking to outfit every patrol quad, uh, patrol car with a Brink Ball. Um, and essentially what it is, is a two-way device. You just throw it in, it's super durable, uh, and then you call it. It has a phone number, it's that, it's that easy. Um, I'm gonna call one of these. It might be that one. We're gonna get some echo. We're we're live. We're on the fly right now. So we're on the fly right now. I think it's Brink Ball 30. We're gonna see. So how I do it, and you know, we have two balls here, so I might have messed up the contact card, but you just save it to your contacts on your phone and then you call it. And we're gonna get some bad echo. Hello? So you can kinda of see the bad echo. Can you hold that for a second? Yeah, absolutely. Hello? Hello, this is Team Brink. Oh yeah, that's the further you get away, the clearer it comes through. Yeah, this one's actually at two percent battery. This one's dying. Oh, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I can grab another one real quick. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. No, that's all right. I'm very interested in how this works. So we'll hold on to this. So just calling the other ball we have. Hello. Hello. This is, this team, is Brink. team Brink. Please, Please come, come out with your arms up. That's about as authentic an experience that you can get right there. Yeah. So that's excellent. So we leave them on for the whole show. This is still at 59% battery, so okay. they last for seven days standby time, which okay. is uh, uh, nice. Uh, that was very cool. Yeah, so we're very excited about this to get it in the hands of, of teams. We've made a few different upgrades to it from when we initially introduced the product and are starting to ship it out to customers right now. That's excellent. That, that is excellent. So people want to learn more about Brink, whether it's Lemur 2, the Brink Ball, whatever the case may be, where can they go to find out more information about Brink? You guys can go to BrinkDrones.com. Uh, or find us on YouTube or Instagram or, or Twitter, wherever kind of you are on social media. Uh, but BrinkDrones.com, we have a lot of great information about our products, uh, companies that are using it, agencies that are using it, and a lot more. Excellent. Hey, David, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Yeah.